I really appreciate all you guys who is sending me emails with questions. And I spent about, honestly, about an hour after work hours every day trying to answer all the comments and questions. I'm falling behind on emails. And uh, some people have actually reacted to that and been like, hey man, I sent you an email and I haven't heard back. That's rude. And it kind of is. Um, so I thought we will try something new. We'll just try this. I need you to let me know in the comments area if this is good or if it's bad. We're gonna try on Wednesdays, and of course this is just, just until we, we decide we don't want to do this anymore. On Wednesdays, I want to answer some of the questions I've gotten uh, per email because if one guy has the question, then uh, there's probably a bunch of other people who have kind of the same Fusion 360 question. Well, I'll answer anything you ask me. Um, but and and then it gives us an opportunity to kind of like jump into a couple of different things instead of just like one theme that maybe you don't find so interesting so just an attempt you let me know uh what you think if if this is uh, silly then um you know then let me know in the comments area okay i can see we all got a bunch of people in here so uh let's go here first question uh comes from bernie and again sorry bernie that i haven't replied to email so long ago but the um, question Bernie asks is, how do you deal uh, with what he calls unequal bevel edges? Let's go into uh, to Fusion here. So, um, what, and Bernie sent me a picture of something similar to what he's trying to achieve. So, a, a chamfer, if you want to call it, uh, that is kind of like unequal, like it's different uh, edges here. And there's a couple of different ways that you could handle something like this. Um, but I'll show you uh, my, my tip. And this is, you know, it's, I'm just trying to show you different tools inside of the software here. So maybe it's not always the perfect solution, but <laughs> it will give you maybe something to think about when you're attacking your situation. So the way I created this edge uh, was that I went in and I create, I'm going to use the, there's no reason to hide it. I'm going to use the loft command for this. And we're actually going to be using uh, the loft command a couple of times uh, today. So I'm going to go in and create an offset plane. And that offset plane is going to be where I want the, the, the end of this um, triangle to, to end, the sharp end down here. So I'm going to click offset plane. I'm going to select some face and uh, you know this is all about like how far down you want that point uh, down here so I probably went minus 40 millimeters so this one here let's go minus 60 so I'm creating a plane that like there was the construction plane offset plane I'm creating a plane down uh, here then I'm gonna draw a sketch on that plane so I'm gonna go up here and say create new sketch and I'm gonna select that plane now my view is gonna go normal to that plane, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create a point. And this is probably the only time that I'm using points in Fusion 360, I think. Uh, it probably shouldn't be, but... So I'm gonna select a point, and I'm gonna place a point right on that corner right there, and then I'm gonna stop this sketch. So what I just did was I created an offset plane from this face down to where you now see that point, and that point is sitting right on uh, that section there. Then I'm gonna create another sketch. So two, one offset plane, then two sketches. The next sketch is gonna be up here on the top face. And then I can draw a line somewhere across here. And uh, I'm gonna hit D for dimension, probably should probably give it some kind of a dimension here. Let's call that 18. Uh, we could also do what I mentioned from here to here. And then we could do that trick I did uh, yesterday when I sketched. If I know these two is going to be 45, I could click on this one. So that dimension is now this dimension. And now I would only have to change one of these to, uh, to move the other one uh, also. And then what I'm going to do, and this was something that I didn't know in the longest time. I'm going to create a loft cut between this line and this point. You can actually use points as part of your loft feature. So I'm gonna select up here on this section, and then I'm gonna select that point with the loft command, 
and that becomes a uh, a cut and uh, and gives you that what Bernie described as an unequal babalatch, um, or at least the picture he, sh he showed me was something uh, similar to this. So that was, I think, a neat little trick, possibly, uh, to, uh, to create, create that. Um, you let me know down in the comment area what, what you think. But thank you, Bernie, for sending the email, um, and uh, I'll make sure that you get a link to this video, so at least Bernie don't, don't lose his um, you know, don't think that I've completely forgotten about him. Doc asks another question, and that's in regards to sketching. Um, how can it be that whenever he trims his sketches that they become uh, underdefined? And that's a very, very good question. Um, it's probably not, I really don't have a good answer uh, to you, Doc. But, um, you know, if I go and open a new sketch here, uh, a new part and let's go and open a new sketch on whatever face let's go in here and um, as keys and a rectangle I'm just gonna draw something up here something like this um, and then just to make it a little bit more complicated let's add a couple of fillets do do here 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 now notice when I do this that um, Fusion is smart enough to add these different constraints. And again, we talked about this yesterday, uh, how there's these different constraints in here when we add these fillets. However, if I now go in and I do something, a rectangle like this, and then do something like these two or on there, let's put a dimension on this. If I create this and I go in and I tr hit the trim command and I select this, I actually get a warning down here. Constraints all dim and all dimensions were removed during the operation. Um, and you will see that now my sketch turned blue. Now it actually did not remove that uh, line because I used the, the two point rectangle. So I actually created a double line. But if I click on here, you will now see that I now have this, this opening uh, gap right here. So to Doc's point, what happened? Well, what happened was that when I, when I started trimming this geometry, Fusion was not able to, to solve this. And primarily because that there is so many different, uh, you know, ways that this could work. And, and the way around this, honestly, if you get to this point, is that you might actually have to go in and start uh, looking at what you have here. And uh, the easiest thing, if, if this was what you wanted it up with, is actually to go in and start applying uh, maybe some, some dimensions uh, to this and try to figure out if you could uh, kind of like get everything uh, tied down. So I just want to bring this up in case Oh, and then this is a good thing. So now I just added a dimension. I'm going to cancel out of this. So here's another, I might as well just answer another question I'll get if I don't talk about this. If I click here and I click here uh, and place this 30, notice that when I click now, I get this warning coming up and it says adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose OK to create a driven dimension. And this, this is not an error. This is not that you have done something wrong and you should hurry up and click cancel. All it means is, I'm going to hit OK to it. All it means is that since I had this 50, since I had these two tens, this dimension really doesn't need to be there. And you will see that it's in brackets, which means it's just a reference dimension. Um, it doesn't do much more than just uh, references. Now it will. Uh, change if I add if I change this to five, this will be uh, 35. So um, it will just update, but it doesn't drive uh, this dimension. I guess my, my point, Doug, is that yes, that is what Fusion will do. Things will get underdefined if you start trimming your sketches, and now you will have to go in and try to add some other dimensions. The easiest way is to grab a corner with your mouse and start moving around. And that many times will give you an indication of what you kind of like got to start uh, nailing down. 
So uh, maybe in this case, I would then next add a oval dimension here um, and start like, you, you have to kind of like start figuring out what is moving around here and you can kind of start adding those uh, dimensions in there. So that is gonna result in, in a little bit of work uh, from your side, but that is, uh, that's kind of like what, what you have to do. All right, I hope that was, that was useful. I know that that was not a, that I didn't have like the magic uh, solution for that, but you know what? I think that, uh, I think that's, that's okay sometimes, isn't it? Hopefully it is. Um, next question is about 3D printing, and that is from Nathan. Um, hope I'm pronouncing names okay here. Um, I brought in this model. We did this model a while back. I don't know if you remember this one. Um, we had like a screwdriver. We made kind of like a mold uh, that could hold uh, a screwdriver, a little box for that. Nathan asks a question in regards to, um, he has a 3D printer and uh, printing things out. And then, um, you know, how do you, how do you do tolerances? And I've done a couple of live streams on uh, tolerances uh, before. Um, and, uh, and, and, and this can be a little bit of a touchy subject, but I wanted to give a couple of different solutions for this one probably my favorite i think is to actually go in and maybe use uh parameters so what you could do is if we go back to like uh, maybe the original sketch here we have a sketch and 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 this here probably means that you got to think a little bit ahead um, but we have a sketch here uh, 60 by 120 um, in here and what we could do was we could go in to our parameters and I've actually used this uh, I've used this a couple of times when I was machining things where I knew that I might have to do some some adjustments to the model now I talked about before that if you if you best practices normally uh, if I can be like as vague as possible, is to keep your model nominal and then adjust it uh, on, on some other place. Uh, but if it's specifically for 3D printing, and that could be both uh, plastic or uh, metal 3D printing, um, it depends many times on your machine. So you have to make uh, adjustment on the model. Now, before I actually go in, actually before I go in and do the, the, the parameters, uh, I should say the, the first one you should probably know about is the scaling factor. So what we could do to this model, let's say that this model came out a little small, a little tight in the overall box. Uh, we, the easiest thing would go in and click the scale, let's find our modify, select our, our, our body here and we could, now, uh, we could now add a scaling factor. So that could be like, you know, one is scaling factor one. So if I make this to two, you will see that the model becomes a little bit bigger. Uh, if I make it eight, you will see the model becomes a lot bigger. So that's probably the, the, the quickest way to add, uh, change the complete mass. Uh, another thing you could do was using parameters. And this is probably easiest to do if you know that this is going to happen as you're going along, if you're going into the first sketches here. But what you could do uh, is you could go into your parameters and you could create a user parameter and I'm going to call this one tolerance and uh, give it some kind of a value in here. So let's say that we, we, we want to play with our tolerance and I'm just going to say uh, 0.2, uh, that value. Now I'm, I'm, I'm putting this in here. It doesn't really mean much, um, but what I can do is I can find uh, these sketches in here in, in my model. So, if you go into the model parameters, you will see that here is the 120 and here is the 60. And I could type in here uh, plus and then type in the name tolerance. You will see that that appears there. And when I hit enter, you will see that whatever I have in this field will be added to that 120. So I'm just gonna hit enter and you will now see that that value goes up there. We could do the same thing to the width. So go next to that, hit plus and type in tolerance, or T for tolerance, and now whatever we put in here will now be added to that value. So if I keep that zero, well, then it will be back to, to the nominal. That will give me a chance um, that whenever I, I, I get this part out, I wanna make a change, 
uh, that I can actually go in and uh, and just quickly go into this parameter right in here um, and I could change that uh, to whatever I, I, I think I need to adjust this with hit enter and and these dimension will actually um, will actually become that that's one way you can use uh, these tolerances here okay another one could be more specifically on the model so one scenario could be we had the screwdriver that fits nicely inside of this and I should have written down what live stream this was <laughs> uh, I can't remember you're gonna have to, uh, to send me an email uh, for that one uh, but one thing you could do was if we wanted this diameter here to be a little bit uh, adjusted for tolerance we could hit Q for press pull and we could use the offset face see how the offset face here uh, to, to, to play uh, with that and we could actually just uh, go in here and type the same parameter in to the offset face so if I hit T for tolerance you will actually see that that appears uh, right here um, it has to be probably a value for it to eat it so let's just go back into uh, if I gotta use it in here it probably can't be zero let's make it 0 0.1 well actually I mean the box just got a little bit bigger um, if we go back in hit Q press pull and I type in here highlight this T for tolerance then I can hit OK to it and this offset will now follow whatever we put into uh, into our tolerance so if we go in here and make this 0.5 when I hit enter you should actually be able to see that this uh, should change I hope you could see it everything kind of changed that's actually kind of cool both the outside of the box and that and that changed so uh, be aware of that I wonder if I can make it zero now I actually could so it's just uh, in the dialog box here it can't be zero the first time but it can surely be it uh, the second time so I hope that uh, Nathan, I hope that this gave you uh, a couple of different uh, ways to um, a couple of ways to uh, to, to work with uh, tolerances within your within your printed pattern. Okay, how much time do we have here? Twenty minutes. All right, this is good. We'll take. Uh, let's take one more. So um, the next one comes from Bradley. Bradley uh, works with cabinet doors, um, and one of the questions that Bradley had was, and I model up my own cabinet door. Isn't that a fancy? little thing there um, one of the questions that Bradley had was uh, in regards to um, if you're using the pattern function so you have you know a slew of, of different cabinets doors so you can go in and you can do like something like a rectangular pattern and I'm gonna select bodies and uh, let's select the direction to go along so let's like the bottom edge here and uh, in this case here <clears throat> I get three of them let me hit OK Right, so now we have three uh, different uh, cabinet doors. Now the question that Bradley had was in regards to moving these around after you've kind of like patterned them. Well, it's important to know that the pattern feature, create pattern, it's really a representation of the original one. What I mean by that is if I go back in history before I patterned this, so I went back down the history down here, right? And I decided to create um, a sketch and I blew a hole through this one. Well, then my pattern also will have a hole in them because these are just copies uh, of the original one there isn't much you can do uh, with these they kind of like gotta follow the pattern direction the only trick that there is that you may or may not know about let me just make a couple of more let's make five of these and let's just extend them out a little bit more um, you maybe have missed this but there is a check mark in here and you can actually uh, take out the ones that you don't want that can sometimes uh, be uh, be handy now of course the solution to this let me cancel out of this let's get rid of the pattern and we can actually also get rid of the hole um, the solution if you want to be able to move around these could be to right click and select move copy instead 
and then you can select the body and you actually get a copy version down here so you can click this and now you will get uh, a copy here and that uh, you could now do move in different uh, directions uh, you get some more options to uh, to what you want to do with that as a as a copy versus a um, a pattern is really a, uh, a more of a representation what we actually have here is we will end up with a second body uh, in in our folder here um, and that actually also mean that um, in this case um, you know we, we we have the history down here um, if I go back um, and I create another sketch here see for circle Q press pull hit OK and let's move forward again you will see also this one uh, follows uh, that but it's important to notify that these timelines here mean something right um, because if I move this uh, this copy paste before the, the the sketch and the extrude well then uh, then the whole is not there okay so I hope uh, I hope that that was uh, that was helpful uh, for uh, for that one Bradley uh, definitely um, definitely a, a good question so this is something new trying here to answer some of these email questions via the live streams we'll try to do this on Wednesdays um, of course next week I'm traveling so they're only gonna be live streams I think on Friday next week um, but this is something new trying to answer some people's questions that means that in this 30 minutes we get a little bit get to touch some different things but hopefully it's helpful you need to let me know in the comments area if this is a good concept or if you think that this uh, this this stinks we might just try some few Wednesdays last one is Gary uh, Gary had a question in regards to um, golf, a golf club. Um, sure, there's some people there who uh, who like golf. So the last uh, one I want to bring up here, and don't laugh. This is uh, this is my five minute. <laughs> this is me modeling up a golf club and handle in uh, in, in 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 two minutes. Uh, yeah, I don't expect anybody to challenge uh, my pattern. Uh, infringement on this one but you know what the way I play golf uh, this thing here is freaking uh, probably as good as anything else um, what Gary was asking about was making the transition between here uh, up to here and um, Gary had played around with the sculpt environment but it's actually not I mean I'm seriously I, don't, I think that's actually a pretty good a pretty good tool to try to use the sculpt for this because it is um, you know, a, somewhat an organic uh, type uh, of shape here, um, I'm thinking. So let's just see. Um, so, but what I was thinking was, I wanted to make sure that you know some of the functions within the loft command. And this is, I don't know if this is super advanced, but we just used the loft uh, before, right? When we did the first, uh, how to make these um, unequal bevel edges. Uh, that Bernie asked about um, well here's the loft command again but I there's a couple of things in here that I think is really cool so this is supposed to be the handle this is supposed to be my golf club hat here um, if you go in and use the loft command I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna select this round face fusion is actually smart enough to create a transition between these two. And I, I mean, I know that it's just ones and zeros and math, but what it does is it actually takes, let me just cancel out it again. It, you will see on a loft that it takes this shape and then it converts it over to this shape. So if you're looking at one end of it, it starts out being this shape transferring to the other end and, and vice versa right click repeat loft so from this phase to this phase you can see here how that's following that edge it starts transforming over to the round and the round is transferring over to to this shape over here now when i used to do a lot of wire adm what is a manufacturing process 
we actually do somewhat a lot of, of loft style things, um, we would actually, to get a better control of the transition between between the round around and 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 a, a shape that has a lot of intersection points because around actually only have kind of one intersection where this one have every corner we would actually break up the circle where we wanted to intersect and that is, is something you may want to consider but what I want to show you is you can actually grab these points left click and I can select this and look I can actually drag these now you can you can only drag them a little bit if you go too far down the loft will explode on you um, but notice how I can actually go around here and I can grab these and I can actually change that transition between these two points and it gives me a chance to kind of like create maybe a little bit of a better transition between uh, these two uh, so that's the first thing I want you uh, to know. This was Gary who asked this question. That you have uh, this this function here if you want to try to use the loft. The next thing you have is over underneath here, you can choose to go uh, G0, tangent, what is called G1, and G2, where it's a curvature. And we talked about this in the past. I actually did a live stream about curvatures. So if you want to impress your girlfriend with some... Uh, G like curvature fancy talk here you go uh, or your best friend or whatever but what happens here is um, that if I right now G0 means that there is a literally a straight transition between this round and the shape going between the two if I change it to tangent and I click on that you see how the, the shape changes zero tangent so now it actually creates a tangency between the edges to that shape. Now, of course, you want to try curvature. And you will see that it changed a little bit more, trying to keep a continuous flow on this. Now, the first one, this is only profile one. If I go down to profile two, what is this other one? It gives me another opportunity to do the same thing there. So tangent there, that changes the shape more. And curvature, actually, in this case, it cannot handle curvature between the two. If I change this one back to tangent, still don't want to do it. Zero. It will do it for zero. So you might have to play around with, with this a little bit. But my point is, if you do this, is that you're actually getting a chance to, uh, to create something that might look closer to what you want uh, right here. And then, of course, you can still go in and start playing with these, with these points. The last thing you could do is to use a, uh, a rail to pull this width. So if I turn my sketches on, I actually created a spline. Uh, and this is a, a, um, a 3D sketch. I uh, did a live stream on that. And now we can actually try to pull the shape towards uh, that spline. Now you can see the thing starts getting a little hairy. Um, so we might have to play with some of the different the different settings here to kind of getting something that we are somewhat uh, happy with. Um, and maybe this spline is not the, the prettiest solution, but the point is that within the laugh command, you have all these different tools that you can use. And I could create another rail here to kind of like pull the bottom towards this direction and then the top towards this direction. But I want Gary to know that the sculpt is, is one thing but I actually think that, you know, if you go in, let me just delete this rail again. Um, go in here, edit feature, select this rail, get rid of that. Maybe hide that sketch. That if you go in here, I actually think that maybe tangency, that might actually look like a pretty good transition uh, between, between the two. You let me know, um, you let me know what, what you think, Gary. Uh, but yeah, so I hope this was useful. Um, the, like I said, the hope is to, uh, to, for you guys, like I said in the beginning, I'm falling behind on emails. I'm so sorry. I try to answer as many as I can, uh, but I thought that maybe we try uh, for the next few Wednesdays. I'm out of town next week. Uh, but following Wednesdays to try to attack some of these different uh, questions from, uh, from people. You got to let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this format. 
I think the nice thing about it is that we kind of get to touch a couple of different things in a half an hour instead of like one topic that maybe somebody's not interested in. We'll still do full day on, on, on different things. So, all right, 101 people. Really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to do this. Do me a favor, thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. Please be honest, I need to know. I'm, I'm, this is just an attempt to add some more value to your Fusion 360 experience. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that would be great. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it. That's how I can tell my boss that there's actually people who, uh, who are paying attention to this. I really appreciate it, folks. Hope you have an awesome day. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much for taking the time for that. If you're in the live stream, I'm going to end the broadcast and then I'm going to jump in to uh, say hi to everybody. So, until tomorrow, same time, thank you so much. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you.